word apartheid is uh, is exactly accurate. You know, this is uh, an, an area that's occupied by two powers. Uh, they're now completely separated. The Palestinians can't even ride on the same roads that the Israelis have created or built in Palestinian territory. So within Palestinian territory, they're absolutely and totally separated, much worse than they were in South Africa, by the way. And the other thing is, the other definition of apartheid is one side dominates the other, and the Israelis completely dominate the life um, of the Palestinian people. Why don't Americans know what you have seen? <laughs> Americans don't want to know, and um, many Israelis don't want to know what um, is going on inside Palestine. It's a, it's a terrible human rights persecution that is far transcends what any outsider would imagine. And there are powerful political forces in America that prevents any objective analysis of the problem in the Holy Land. Uh, I think it's accurate to say that, that not, not a single member of Congress with, which I, with whom I'm familiar would possibly speak out and um, call for Israel to withdraw to their legal boundaries or to um, publicize the plight of the Palestinians or even to call publicly and, and repeatedly for good faith peace talks. There had been a day of peace talks now in more than seven years. So this is a, a taboo subject, and, and I would say that if any member of Congress did speak out, as I've just described, they would probably not, not be back into Congress the next term. Who are <clears throat> these forces that you're talking about? Well, there's an inherent um, commitment in America, which I uh, share as a Christian, of um, a deep commitment to make sure that Israel is safe and that Israel is free and uh, that they uh, can seek for peace. So there's a strong inclination for all of us to support uh, Israel's continued existence in peace. <clears throat> uh, and, and that is uh, added on to by the uh, very effective work of the American-Israeli uh, group called APAC, which is uh, performing its completely legitimate task of convincing Americans to support the policies of the Israeli government. And uh, APAC is not dedicated to peace. They're, they're dedicated to uh, inducing the maximum support in America, in the White House, in the Congress, and in the public media uh, for whatever policies the Israeli government has at a particular time, and they're extremely effective. APAC, I think, was organized in the distant past, I think, when Eisenhower was president, and they've, and they've grown in influence, and, and, and in some ways, they are to be admired. Did they influence you as president? Not really, because I was immune <clears throat> from those pressures. Uh, when I was elected president, you know, I, I came out of nowhere. Nobody thought I was going to win until the last minute, and so I wasn't obligated to them. And I, and I worked assiduously. Uh, almost every day of my term as president to bring peace to Israel and also peace to Israel's neighbors and we negotiated a peace treaty between Israel and Egypt not a word of which has ever been violated so I don't think there was any doubt that uh, that my commitment then and now was to see Israel have peace living in harmony with its neighbors and justice as well and peace uh, for Israel's neighbors. President Carter, <clears throat> when did you come to understand, through your presidency and beyond, the situation of the Palestinians? Well, the situation with the Palestinians when I was president was not all that bad. Uh, the first time I went to Israel, I was governor, uh, and I went to the West Bank. There were only 1,500 settlers in all of the West Bank. And a general presumption, even by Israeli leaders with whom I met, was that Israel would withdraw from the Palestinian territories. It was a temporary thing. And when I negotiated an agreement with the Prime Minister of Israel, Menachem Begin, uh, he agreed that uh, the political forces and the military forces of Israel would be withdrawn from Palestinian territory. That's all in a written agreement. But in the last 10 years, 
um, I would say the situation has deteriorated rapidly. Not many people are permitted to go uh, and visit as we have done. Uh, for instance, members of Bet Selim, uh, the outstanding human rights organization within Israel, those members are not permitted to go into areas of the West Bank. Uh, they have to observe from a distance what goes on, say, in Gaza now. But uh, on three occasions, the Carter Center, led by me personally, have been invited by the Palestinians to monitor their election. In 1996, uh, when Arafat was elected president and the first parliament, so-called, was elected. Again, after Arafat died, uh, when Mahmoud Abbas was elected president. And then in 2006, in uh, January, uh, when the Hamas ran for uh, parliamentary seats and, and they were successful. So in, in performing the duty of monitoring election, we are obligated to go to every village and every town in the entire West Bank and also throughout Gaza to see what's going on. So we could see the, uh, the terrible plight <coughs> of the Palestinians, the fact that, that Israel has over 200 settlements on Palestinian territory, all fortified, that Israel has over 500 checkpoints <coughs> in Palestine where the Palestinians can't move from one place to another, and where there's a wall being built uh, completely surrounding uh, Gaza, completely surrounding Bethlehem and other substantial sized cities, deeply intruding into Palestinian territory and uh, encompassing more and more land for the Israelis to take away from Palestine. And, and the fact is <coughs> that the, the West Bank is a tiny little place that was carved out for the Palestinians, uh, just 22% of a total land. But uh, the problem is that Israel wants to take that 22% and control it. And this is a major obstacle to having what I want and what most Israelis want, about an overwhelming majority, and that is peace. At this conference, you described the wall as worse than the Berlin Wall. Oh, it's much worse. The Berlin Wall was built by the communists on the communist side of the border between East and West uh, Germany, as you know. This wall is built on Palestinian land, and it's designed not for security. That, that's an ancillary benefit, but it goes deep within the West Bank just to carve out more and more land. Uh, for the Israelis to occupy on, in Palestine. What is the point of the wall? The wall was built, uh, was planned originally by Yitzhak Rabin when he was prime minister. He's the one that negotiated the Oslo Agreement, a peace agreement, uh, to be built along the border, the 1967 border between Israel and Palestine. And the International World Court and, and I and others uh, approved completely. There's nothing wrong with that. That would have been like the Berlin Wall. But then Rabin was assassinated, and his successors, uh, Netanyahu and Sharon and others, decided let's move the wall from the Israeli border to intrude deeply within Palestine to carve out some of that precious land for the Israeli settlers to occupy.